Good morning, everyone. I pray today that you know that wherever you are, whatever is happening in your life, that the Father is there with you. I pray also that you understand and know that the Father has made up his mind about you. Yes, he has. He's made up your, his mind about you because he loves you. Yes, you're created in his image. Yes. He loves you as a son or daughter. Yes. And I know there are folk who are saying, gee, I'm not sure about my relationship with the Father. The Father loves you anyway. Remember, Jesus says, I came too for sinners. And there, there are some sinners amongst us. And the Father says, I love you and I want you to know and walk with me. So that you may understand and know the love that I have for you. Well, today we're looking at Psalm 119, verses 113 through 120. And here, the psalmist is talking about the double-minded. Those people who can't make up their minds. Those people who, they're, they're, sometimes their decisions are like ping-pong balls. They bounce back and forth. Yet, as he speaks, he's also speaking to us as believers. That we've made up our minds. That we're going to follow the Father. And so as we walk through this section of Psalm 119, you know, he's talking about the double-minded. And so what we're going to do is we're going to look at what he says and then what that means for the double-minded. Because the double-minded often means that they're trying to serve two masters. And Jesus tells us that you can't serve two masters. You love one, hate the other. Hate one, love the other. Because you're going back and forth. There's a Greek word for that. It's called dicycles. <laughs> Two minds working together. Two minds, as some will say, I'm of two minds. It means you can't make a decision. Choose. And I pray today that you choose the Father. As we learned uh, yesterday, that it's an attitude of the heart. Because our heart's going to inform our mind, and our mind is going to inform our heart as to how do we proceed here. Here's Psalm 119, 13 through 20. I hate those who are double-minded, but I love your word. You are my hiding place and my shield. I wait for your word. Depart from me, evildoers, that I may observe the commandments of my God. Sustain me with your word that I may live and do not let me be ashamed of my hope. Lord, uphold me that I may be safe, that I may have regard for your statutes continually. You have rejected all those who wander away from your statutes, for their deceitfulness is useless. You have removed all the wicked from the earth like dross. Therefore, I love your testimonies. My flesh trembles in fear of you. I am afraid of your judgments. Mercy. He's saying, I love your law, but Lord, the double-minded, I don't know about them. And so let's look for a moment at what the Word says about the double-minded. Let's first go to James 1. But if anyone of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God who gives to all generously and without reproach, it will be given to him. Ah, here it is. But we must ask in faith without doubting, for the one who doubts is like the surf of the sea, driven and tossed by the wind. For that person ought to expect that it will receive nothing from the Lord, being a double-minded person, unstable in all their ways. Whoa! What's he saying here? here? Here it is. There's two very clear descriptions of the double-minded. One, like the surf on the sea. I, again, I have the privilege of living in one of the wonderful cities of the world. And whether I'm on the east side of town or the west side of town, I get to see the surf just come and crash. It's always changing. You can't find two waves just the same. Ask any surfer. They'll tell you that. Then unstable in all of their ways. So what is he saying here? Let's look and see here. 113. I hate those who are double-minded. Why? They don't know your word. They don't love you at all. They don't want your commandments. It's worrisome to them. 
Then he says, Lord, you are my hiding place. You are my security. I wait in your word. I, you're, you are my shield. The double-minded have no such protections. They have no such hope. They don't have a hiding place or shield. Why? Because they can't make up their mind. Which way am I going to go? Am I going to be God's person today or am I going to live in my flesh? Or am I just going to go out and sin because I like sinning? We all know people like that. They just That's their deal. Then he says, depart from me, evildoers. I, you, I don't have time for you. Now, it's not that he doesn't want to be in relationships with the, these people. It's that their ways are bothersome. Remember Psalm 1 again some one man or woman is like a tree planted by the water they're always bearing fruit in their season they're healthy and growing the wicked the double-minded are not so they're they're like the wind they're just blown everywhere i want to live my life for the father and yes i will give you all the joy all the peace everything i have but i won't tolerate your wickedness Someone called me a few weeks ago, and we had a wonderful, wonderful conversation. And I asked the question, when are you going to lay down the wickedness and take up righteousness? Oh, there was a lot of backpedaling in that conversation all of a sudden. Why? Because they were enjoying their wickedness. And that's what he's saying. I don't want you to live in wickedness, but if that's where you live, I'm just going to pray for you and lead you out. Sustain me according to your word. Don't let me be ashamed of my hope. Lord, speak here. Because, Father, I want to glorify you in the presence of my friends, my godless friends, my friends who can't seem to make up their mind. Lord, they don't have you to sustain them. I do, Father. Hold me up that, Father, I may continue to speak your word. Because, Father, I know and have regard for your statutes, your word to me each day. Uphold me that I will be safe. That, Father, I may speak here because, Father, there's nothing upholding them. The enemy keeps making them think that they're okay, but they're not. Lord, you've rejected all those who wander, who are double-minded like dross. What's the idea here of dross? Think hot and metal. You fire metal, you melt it, and then you scrape off all the stuff that does not belong. And that's what the fo- he's saying here. Lord, you scrape them away like dross. You get rid of the wickedness of their lives. I had the privilege of discipling and leading several young men. One in particular comes to mind right now. He said this, I've tried everything else. I might as well try Jesus. He did, and suddenly his life began to change. The dross was being wiped off. I know where that young man is today. And I couldn't be prouder of him more than he was my son because of what God has done in his life as I've watched that journey take place. Why? Because, Lord, you scrape away the dross in their lives and you replace it with righteousness. They may reject you, and so the Father, as they receive the Father, gets rid of the dross in their lives. But Father, I love your testimonies, your word to me. My flesh trembles in fear of you, and I am afraid of your judgments. They don't fear the Father. Say, Lord, I fear you. I am in awe of you. Lord, I fear your judgments. My flesh trembles. There's a commercial that comes on every so often. Gentleman stands there and says, I represent the Atheist Society. I'm not afraid to burn in hell. Join me. What do you do with that? You realize that the Father is going to judge And so you live in fear of that judgment. Not that you've got to perform something. Why? Because Jesus has come to speak into your life. But you pray for them. And your friends who make that bold statement, I'm not afraid of God's judgment. 
You might whisper in their ears, you should be. Why? Because the Father, too, hates the double-minded. Lord, we bless you and praise you for today. And Lord, thank you. Lord, help us as we walk with you today, Lord, to make up our minds to walk with you, Jesus. In your name, Lord, we pray. Amen. Be blessed today, dear friends.